Hi everyone, Pierrick from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you a method to rig non-spherical eyes so that you can use them for cartoon characters, for example. Most of the time we will have to rig spherical eyes and this is not really a problem. But when it comes to cartoonish character or anime character, you will probably have to distort those eyes, using a lattice for example. The problem is that it will also deform the iris unless you go into very complicated rigging solutions. In this video I will show you a different solution and two ways to achieve it. Let's get started. We will start with a procedural eye texture using gradient. In the second example I will use picture based texture. Whatever you choose doesn't really matter as the main focus will be to manipulate the texture coordinates. We will start simple using a simple plane. By default it's already UV unwrapped. Since the solution is shader based I will create a first material. With my principal shader selected I will press Ctrl T to add a texture setup. I will get rid of the image texture node and I will add a texture gradient texture. By default it is set to linear. I will switch to quadratic sphere so that we have a rounded gradient. Note that I'm using EV here and I've set my viewport to material preview. To be able to control the gradient I will use a map range node. It's more convenient than using the classical gradient node. If I increase the from minimum value it will shrink the gradient. In the mapping node when using the point method for mapping the coordinate seems inverted as to move from left to right for example you have to dial the x value into the minimum. We can switch to texture type and then it will behave more in intuitively. Now that we have a proper mapping method, we can go ahead and add a gradient just after the map range that will allow us to input a bit of color. I will go for a simple blue eye with a black pupil and then I will offset the coordinate so that it's right in the middle of our plane. We now have our base eye texture, let's go ahead and build the mechanism. To rig the eye I will be using an armature. I will create a first bone that will be our root eye bone. Since naming and axis will be quite important, I will display them in the viewport. But first, in edit mode, I want to align the bone with the world space. So I will go into edit bone, snap the tail to the head and move it on the Y axis. It's a personal preference. This way the bone is aligned with the world space so it makes its uh, animation curve easier to read. I will then create a second bone by simply duplicating it that will be our control iris. Since we won't be deforming the mesh I will simply go into object mode then select the armature and parent the object directly to the root bone. Now I will create a couple of drivers that will allow us to modify the coordinates using the control eye. So I will select my eye object and pin the shader so that whatever we are selecting it will be displayed into the shader edit. On the X location of the mapping node I will right click and add the driver. I will keep it on script expression. We will get rid of the expression and only keep the variable. The variable will be the armature and the bone X location in local space. So I will select Control I X location local space. Since the controller hasn't moved, the eye is snapped to zero. Let's edit the variable and add plus 0.5. And now it's back to the middle of. If I now move the controller from left to right, we can see the iris moving too. But there is a clear offset between the controller movement and the iris movement because the values that are used are the local space of the bone. And this is because we are using relative movement, the movement of the bone in space, to control absolute coordinates. The UV coordinates that whatever the size of the object or its shape will go from 0 to 1. To make those two matching we simply need to re-edit the driver and add a factor onto the variable. So I will simply add a 0.35 multiply variable plus 
We don't need to add parentheses because the multiplication always occur before the addition or subtraction. So you will just have to find the right factor by trial and error. Now I just need to repeat the process on the Y axis. So I will simply copy the driver and paste it. And then instead of the X location of the bone, I will be using the Z location of the bone. To scale the iris, we will simply source the X scale of the bone and the Z scale of the bone for the Y axis. You can use whether average value or simply Keep the script expression and remove anything from the variable but its name. Just repeat the process for the Y scale of the mapping node using the Z scale of the bone. We will go a little further now by allowing us to control the iris and the pupil separately. I will just add a couple of custom shapes to the rig to make it more readable. Then we will duplicate our gradient shape from the mapping node and we will get rid of the black color in the first gradient and use only the black in the second gradient. We can simply mix those two colors using a mix RGB set to multiply. We will multiply the pupil onto our base blue color. To make things simple, instead of using a new mapping node, I will simply play with the map range node. We've seen before that playing with the from minimum value will increase or decrease the scale of our gradient. So I can simply create a new driver on this input. I will create a new bone to control the iris. And then I will drive this value using this new control bone. The higher the map range from minimum value, the smaller the pupil. So it doesn't make this controller super intuitive. But if we modify the driver by using one minus variable, then the higher will be the variable, the smaller will be the result. And so we will have a more intuitive behavior. And we've just achieved our first iRig. If you now want to use this kind of thing on a non-planar shape, you simply have to go into edit mode and unwrap your shape using project from view. Then in the UV image editor, just scale the object so that it fills the UV space as wanted. This way the iris is projected onto the uneven sphere without distortion. You will get distortion only if you reach the outer edges of your object, but it should be covered by the eyelid of your character. For the next example, I will be using a pixel texture. So it's gonna be an iris and a pupil drawn onto a transparent background. So I will create a new shader and get rid of everything and load this picture. This time, to manipulate the UV coordinates of our texture, we will be using the UV Warp modifier. I will start fresh with a new rig, creating a root eye bone. I will parent the object to this bone, and then into edit mode, we need to create a first bone that is going to be our reference bone. This bone won't be manipulated, but it will serve as a reference for the origin of the UV warp. I will create a second bone that is going to be our iris controller and Blender will compare the eye reference with the control iris to drive the UVs. We can edit the modifier in the from input add our eye reference and in the to input add our control iris. From there, it's pretty straightforward. As soon as I will move the control iris, the texture will be moving. But we can see that it's repeating. You won't have this problem with procedural texture, but since it's an image texture, we can go into the shader and switch from repeat to clip. We still have the same problem as in our previous rig to solve. The texture is not perfectly following the controller bone. Note that my bones are aligned with the UV space, meaning that their Y axis is pointing up and their X axis is pointing to the right. To make our texture following properly the control bone, what I will do is 
create an intermediate bone that I will call MCH iris and we will use this bone to drive the modifier. From there this MCH iris bone will be controlling the warp. In edit mode I will parent all of those free bones to the root bone so that they will follow it. And then I will add a driver to the MCH iris X location and Y location. The idea is to then use a driver from the iris controller with a factor to manipulate those locations until we reach a movement that is perfectly following the bone. As usual, it's a matter of trial and error to find the proper value to multiply the variable. I will use the 0.35 we have used before and it should match properly. Now the MCH bone moves less than the controller, but the texture fits the movement of the controller and so it feels more natural to manipulate this rig. I just have to replicate the process on the y-axis and I'm good. Then a simple copy scale and copy rotation constraint will do the job regarding the scaling and the rotation of the texture. The control bone is constraining the MCH. In this case, we can also go a little further by separating the iris, the pupil, and maybe the reflection on the eyes using different image texture. I will mix them together. And then if I want to manipulate them using the UV warp modifier, I simply need to duplicate the UV's data. So I will create a new UV map and it will duplicate by default the previous one. From there in the shader we can input those different UVs using an input UVs and we can source them in the list. So I will use the secondary UV maps to drive the pupil. Then we can go into the modifier stack, duplicate the modifier and set the different UV map as a source for each UV warp modifier. Then I will create a new bone that will allow us to drive this modifier. This is going to be the control pupil and we will need also an MCH pupil. So the MCH pupil will be the bone that will be input in the modifier. To change its location we will simply copy and paste the driver from the iris so that the pupil movement will follow the iris movement and then I will add a copy scale from the control pupil onto the MCH pupil. Using driver and constraint allow us to input an information into the UV warp modifier. If we were using parenting this wouldn't work because whenever you're moving a parent the child follow but its local location or whatever transformation doesn't change and so there is no information input in your modifier. If you want to go further then you just need to create a tracking mechanism for example so that you can create a target bone and the eye will follow. The only thing to think of is to offset the center of rotation so that it more or less slides onto your deformed eye. You can learn how to create eye trackers in the Art of Effective Rigging course. From there you can work to improve the shader and if you want to have real geometry, you can use true displacement, for example, in cycles. While this method has its limitation, I think it's a cool solution to make cartoon eye rig the easy way. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you very, very soon.